Hello, it's episode 137. Adam is here. He's getting coffee. And I decided to start early because he's getting coffee. So I might as well do the sponsor shout outs. Let's go. VetDNA.com for all of your testing needs. Use code hashtag shit happens with the exclamation point for $5 off the crypto panel. We want the crypto panel because both snakes and lizards get either kind of crypto. Can, it's good for all of your other kind of uh, testing needs. I know you need it. You know you need to do it. I know you've been putting it off. And I've been judging you this whole time. Time to get it taken care of, please. Vetdenia.com. It's not like Nido stopped existing just because there was a recession. Just saying. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, my God. Uh, Shane Kelly, Small Town Exotics. He will be at Tinley this weekend. Tinley Hype. Uh, hype train in the chat. Hype, hype, hype. Uh, doing 20% off for pre-sales with deposit for pickup. Shane Kelly, Small Town Exotics. Thank you. He's giving away a free green special St. Patty's Day Small Town Exotics t-shirt to the first, I think, 100 people who stop by the table. Very cool. Everybody likes free stuff. Bravo Zulu Ball Pythons. She will also be at Tinley. She's also doing 20% Tinley sale pickups. Um, uh, head puzzle stuff, head clown stuff, other stuff, probably all ball python stuff. I'm such a good ad reader, but bravo, Zulu ball pythons. Thank you for sponsoring. So, NHL pythons, I still don't have an update for Justin. Justin, your duty, if you're here now or in the future, is to message me a message that says, you know, a collection update. That would be great. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Power House Ball Pythons, Andrew Ball Pythons, Leopard Geckos, Rodents, Go for Coco, Stems and Pythons. He's doing his thing. He's waiting for clutches, but he has a lot going on. He's a Pacific Northwest breeder. He's doing great. I don't think he, he's not going to Jenny, though. Sorry. Sorry, Andrew. I did get Andrew's big boy shirt. I found a 5X shirt for Andrew. So if anybody else wants shirts, message me. It's $25 shipped for a whole back rack podcast shirt or if you're a member $15 or free with purchase mm -hmm. of snake because uh I would like to sell snakes that's my job I think technically thank you Andrew powerhouse pythons great family snakes Alabama breeder of VPI DG pied uh stuff really cool projects really wonderful family they have a cool shirt line too it's like a cute ball python on a heart I have a couple I got it for the kid Kid likes them. Very fun. Great family snakes. They are still working on their reptile room renovations and uh, moving forward. Having fun. Thank you, great family snakes. Chris of BNS Reptilia. It's also Adam's sponsor. That's right. Double mm -hmm. points. Double points. Bing, bing. He's not doing Tinley. Is he sending pines with you? No, so uh, I've got a list of his current availability, and uh, Chris is committed that he'll be like on call for FaceTime or whatever. So you can come by the booth, check out that. Uh, we got his patches, his stickers, his swag, all that's there. But you could you could see exactly what he's got, and then he could ship it to you kind of right on the spot. You know, mm -hmm. we'd love that. Thank yeah. you, Chris. BNS Reptilia. Hopefully, he has lots of boas this year. That's my dream for him. Launch Cata, Costa Rican. Etc. What boas are you going to buy from Chris this year? Me? Yeah. None. Come on, man. <laughs> what do I got to do to convince you to get into another species as a lateral move? Like you've done lateral into uh, goods, rodents. Yeah, rodents. But, yeah. but you can also go lateral into other species. Right. I don't know if, like, for a Business standpoint, I don't know if I would, but I do want, I want either an Amazon, was it Amazon boa or a green tree python? Those things are cool. Just like a, just a sheer like pet fun to look at and get your face eaten. Like those are cool, man. All right. One second. Uh, Andrew did a super chat. Thank you for buying shirts, Andrew. You're the best. Yeah. I tried to send them to him for free and then he paid me anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of people in chat. Okay, like, can we not unpack that real quick? You're saying sure. as a business move, I would not get in other species. But haven't right. you seen that as a business move, it could behoove you, even if it's not a profit center, to get in other species? Because then you can yes. get into other kinds of shows, shows that are like, no ball pythons, back you. 
That's you know? true. That's true. Um, I guess I could be convinced. I don't, I don't, I haven't felt like the passion or excitement and I need to like, it's a steep learning curve. Like you gotta have your stuff together. I just barely feel like I got my act together now. What, what, what it's my ambition to make every ball python breeder breed something else. So I will keep working <laughs> on you forever. Well, there's, okay. So the flip side of that though, too, from a business standpoint is I still think ball pythons are the backbone of the pet and reptile industry. So. Right. I'm like, not telling you not to breed ball pythons. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm telling you to breed another species in addition to it. Possibly. I'll talk to Chris. I'll see. But like, it's not ambitious. I'm not ambitious for that right now. No. Like I, I got to, I don't know, seduced by the all American reptile and plant expo in Denver. Are you going to go? I did decide to go. It's Good an eight you. hour drive for me. Yep. And he's like, I need non ball python breeders. And I was like, I do have ball pythons, but he's like, I just need anybody with anything else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's, I find it kind of like the auctions. If I needed to do it or I felt a need, I would be more excited, but I don't, I don't necessarily have that gap right now, I guess. I mean, it would be good insurance policy if I did ever feel the gap to kind of have it ready to go, but I don't know. So, well, some people are, are already feeling a gap. Do you think like when you do like a zero dollar show, no offense to bring it up. Right. I do. Soon. That's they're 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 Does real. Does it feel like there. there's a gap at that moment? Or you're like, I feel like <laughs> I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do instead of because I think it's largely it has nothing to do with how good someone is at selling. I don't think that's part of it. A lot of times the snakes that sell at a show are sold at that show because the people who wanted to buy them were there. That's correct. That's exactly right. I would argue that. I'll probably 10 out of 10 times, but at least nine out of 10 times. It's it's usually about who needs what, who has what, and are they both there together? There's a few of the impulse buys, the grandma test. Hey, that's beautiful. I'm in. But otherwise, right. yeah, I think it's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, people can compete on price or presentation or whatever, but largely the people have to be in the room to want to buy the snake. But sometimes- Correct. They do not want to buy your snakes and it, to no fault of your own, even to the best of your ability. Then, then you're like, well, do I present different kinds of snakes, other right. morphs of the same species or other kinds of species? So you've never like, you know, in that long drive back while you're contemplating life decisions, been like, damn, maybe I should breed leopard geckos or something. You know, I don't I, know. I was so one of my longest trips is to green bay wisconsin it's way out there i don't even know if it's north south of here i know it's east of here but otherwise it's way out there and that was a zero dollar show last time i did it longest trip home driving and uh and i also got a nasty email from somebody that was very disappointed in my live show content you know told me i had lost my soul and sold isn't out. that the best oh it's great <laughs> it's, i mean Really well written, well put together, very direct. Um, so, you know, I'm reading that at a gas station in rural Wisconsin and zero dollar show there. It, yeah, I don't know. I think about it, um, but I don't I kind of stay the course. I did get into like rodents was a big undertaking. You heard me preach for maybe literally years, but certain like double digit months that I would never, ever deal with rodents. So I thought that was a big step. I think I think I should get a little. There should be a little recognition mm -hmm. there, more more for that. Right, because you can, it's so like, to, to diversify, you can go, or like to change your business position, you can go laterally to accessories for the species you have, laterally to other species, or up to mm -hmm. more high end, or actually down yeah. to like more volume. People wholesale. forget about that too, yeah. Yeah, we all yeah. we all want to chase, chase quad recessives. Like sometimes just a damn good banana combo will get the job done, you know? Right. So that's it, it, many different ways to pivot. So going to rats or ASFs specifically yeah. is good. Fine. Like has a hedging bet. I just, I will probably antagonize everyone. KCS says, no, I shouldn't try to convince people, but I think uh, she's wrong. So there. <laughs> well, uh, so some of it goes to also maybe what we'll talk about in a little bit was where the pressing need was. Um, my need, my 
expenses to buy ASFs, even when I was feeding and still am feeding largely frozen thawed was, um, it was about 500 bucks a month. So getting that 6,000 a year down to zero or hopefully net zero was totally worth it. I don't know that I could do that with another, another, other species right out of the gate, kind of solve mm -hmm. two problems, you know? So there was that pressing, uh, need to that, that, that led to that priority. Yeah. I mean, no, no beef. She's a ball Python only person also. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. I, it is the cornerstone of the industry, but when I see vendors do zero sale shows, it's because they have one species. So they have put all their eggs in one basket. Yeah. Right. How far do we take that though? Cause like Steven at Leviathan would say I'm way too far diversified already. I should be like known for like on Adams. specific projects. Yeah. I think that's okay within a species. The problem is, is you're also like, uh, you know, if someone doesn't like sunset, they will not necessarily want to go to Steven and Courtney for any snake. Cause they're like, well, they probably just all have sunsets. So they yeah. have both the good and bad of that sort of paradigm. Right. Yeah. And, and to clarify for anybody watching, I take this for granted. Steven and Courtney are great friends. We're, we, I, I, I say this to their face every time I see them. So we're like well-rounded, all around respected, completely good, cool people. This isn't me talking smack on Jessica's show. Yeah, no, I, I think I, like I, I done not even sure the right way to construct a ball Python collection currently anymore. So I don't think, I like I have given advice on how I think so much to start a project. I'm not even sure if any advice makes sense to me right now. <laughs> isn't that isn't that weird? Like life is kind of that way. Like people would be like, "What do you recommend?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't." I used to recommend a lot of things, and now I'm like, "I don't know." I here's what works for me, kind of deal, or or more importantly, what hasn't worked for me. You just do what's left, I guess. Try other things, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. Let's do it. Let's do uh, the first warm up topic was supposed to be just like things that we do when we're feeling discouraged or whatever. Right. You know, some kind of down to re energize ourselves to be excited about keeping snakes and selling them. <laughs> was there a was there a particular trigger that made that come to your mind? Or did you just have like a list of things and you're like, ah, oh, that'd be good for Adam. No, I'm just like a fount of positivity <laughs> right. all the time. Right, right. That's right. I was like, you know, let's keep going with that trend. <laughs> no, I, people have been like, you're so fucking negative. The show's so negative. You're right. a bit. Fuck you. You hate ball pythons. And I'm like, no, but I think we should take what we're fucking up currently, recontextualize that and move forward better. Like I go to enough shows, I can see how people are fucking up, right? <laughs> but isn't and, it weird though, too? Don't you just want to be like, hey, you're you're allowed to change the channel. I don't I don't suffer through soap operas in the afternoon. You know why? Because I don't like them. I turn them off and I'm I go on. I watch something else or I do something productive. Like, isn't it funny how people will like craft project, letters? Yeah. Right. All of your life story in the two hours you were on. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's funny. Cause they'd be like, you hate ball pythons. And I'm like, I have 150 plus, so I can't hate them that much. Right. <laughs> you know, I just have beliefs that I've come to over the last four and a half years now, having sold them all over the country and vended next to people and talked to them after dinner, bought expensive snakes and done all this stuff. That's my, like my current personal opinion. And I'm like, that's all. So like, right. But I still have them. I didn't like throw them all away. I didn't give them away. I didn't sell out. So that means I have to like what feel whatever feelings I have and then choose to be positive about it the next day. Cause I have to go clean their cages and feed them and take yep. care of them and sell You're them. Damn sure. Going to poop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where, where the onus for this sort of came from. 
Gotcha. So I have, uh, as you duly noted, some experience with zero dollar shows. So I have those doldrums as well. And now they're uh, the worst. <laughs> there's God, they're horrible. Like the ones close to home, not that bad. Four hour drive after a zero dollar show, the worst thing ever because you're already tired and exhausted too. Because you did the four hour drive on the way there, or you paid the hotel, so you're in the in the red. Uh, I don't know. So to get to, I I really thought about your uh your prompt so i had some thoughts that were like feelings based and then i had some thoughts that were like uh rational based and then i have one like crazy super very atom thing that i do in my life also so uh the feelings based are like i just i kind of go back and look at where i came from so i still think it's mind-blowing that i have pides that i've produced and i know ball python breeders will roll their eyes at that but I remember looking like thinking pides were like the most magical damn thing. I, I was like, like that got me hooked and it's still exciting to me. So, okay. I went from that to, you know, this and I'm hanging out on Jessica's show and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of reaffirming and refreshing. That's cool. But feelings don't necessarily always pay the bills. So then I like to look at, um, I, I track all my sales and, and I actually write budgets and have, benchmarks and goals and knock on wood. Um, I'm, I'm ahead of my goals this year. I haven't always been, but this year I'm ahead of my goals. So that, that helps. Um, from a purely downer thing, I remember how much I hated, I hated life in the pandemic. And that's the lasting memory that I have of my career. So even on my worst zero dollar day, if I'm not homeless, I'm not uh, stuck with people screaming at me in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's pretty pretty pleasant too um, to think about. And then I said I have like the most Adam thing I could do. So like nine years ago, ten years ago, I thought I was doing pretty good in life, and I was reflecting now. Um, but I was like am I on the right path? Like, I feel like I'm making a lot of money, but, but should, should I have more money? Should I have less money? Um, should I take a trip or should I put it in retirement savings? And I didn't, I didn't really have those answers. So I made a, I made a spreadsheet of like my life's net worth goals. I was like, how much do I think I'm going to need to retire? And I didn't know the answer to that either, but I did like the way overly simplistic 4% rule. And I was like, okay, if I think I'm going to need that much this year in retirement, I could extrapolate that I need this much. So I set that much goal. And then I set a goal of a percentage growth each year and backed into where I am with my current net worth. Calc- and I did a whole, you know, assets, liabilities, debt, all of that. And I, to this day, I update that daily. And if I'm ahead of my monthly goal, where it says I should be this month, this year, screw the $0 show because I'm still ahead. So Mm -hmm. that's what I- You're like like, recontextualizing your position. Right. Much bigger. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's very helpful. I do think like just mindfulness in general is helpful. You're like, okay, not starving, have family, not sick uh have a full business so even if it has down years you have right. all the assets in the business right hypothetically cash flowing something you yeah know? i think what you're saying is actually like that's like the right answer and that does probably like condensing down everything i was saying yet we get we get a lot like social media comparison or psh- I'll use Steven mm-hmm. again. I, I don't have the caliber snake. I don't have the, the dollar financial caliber snakes that that guy has. I'm probably not going to for a few more years. I think I'll produce some, but I'm not going to buy them. But that can weigh on us irrationally. Like, oh, how am mm-hmm. I ever going to get ahead? I don't have, uh, you know, I got to vend over. I'm not actually near Bob Vu, but he's going to be in the same room as me. The hell am I doing in that room? You know? So, yeah. Happy money. That was something that just popped out of my mouth one morning when Joe was like, do you make less? And I'm like, yeah, but it's happy money. I make less happy. I make more happy money than I ever made making more money. Right. There's a quality of life question. Yeah. And the other thing that to remember is people with very high end collections get out all the time. 
all yeah. the time. So it doesn't <laughs> matter right. how perfectly curated your collection is, how high end, how much money you spent, or even how well you're doing on social media. Most of the those people are already gone from the hobby. Yeah. Like the guy who imported GHI. Bye. Oh, is he out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of them are out. Like that's mm. the whole point. There's like a there's like a weird survivorship bias where you look at the people who are like on top and you're like, well, they did all these things and that's why they're on top. But there's also people who are on top who just left because they just because it's all internal. <laughs> all the motivation to keep going is a hundred percent internal in the end, and all the extrinsic factors of like how good you appear to be doing uh, they don't they don't actually make you wake up each day and clean a tub it comes from inside yeah and it's and it's bs because i made and now i'm doing well i'm i'm close to getting to what i used to make but i made a whole lot more and i came to hate it i loved it for a long time but i came to hate it i this is i don't think i've said this before publicly it's a true story after i resigned my boss offered me now this had a little bit of context to do with like sort of the labor revolution that happened at the end of the covid pandemic like a lot of people were getting raises right mm -hmm. he offered me 500 bucks a week to stay on like i walked away from that i disliked it and like i made good money but i didn't make walk away from that kind of money money you mm -hmm. know like I, I just i was done it was there wasn't there wasn't a price at that point you know uh, thanks, Jennifer. I don't know. Uh, she's just interested in happy money. Happy money. <laughs> I, that looks like happy money. Like I that. Know, I love it. When? How hard in our lives did we work at one point to make twenty bucks like that? That's happy money right there. Yeah, I. There's a lot of like, yeah, absolutely like comparison. You're always trying to like optimize your business. And you're yeah. like, fuck. And then you get into right. the weeds mentally. And yep. then you're like, well, I have all of this. It's pretty good. So like, but but also part of it has to be letting go business functions that aren't actually working <laughs> too. Right? Surely. You know? Yeah. Yes. And it also just takes immense focus. Like I'm still... I wouldn't say mesmerized, but I'm highly intrigued by these rodents. And even this morning, I was like, hey, dude, you got to drive to Tinley tomorrow. Quit playing with your peas out here and get to work. Like, <laughs> shut shut the door, leave your little ASFs and your little video that you're making of dancing rats and get to work. And you got to do that, too. Like, you got to kick yourself in the pants that way, too. Yeah, rodents are very, uh, I don't know, satisfying because you get a lot of result really quickly. Right. It's a nice offset of ball pythons. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. You're like, oh, I would like more rodents. And then they make more. And it's, you know, <laughs> every three weeks, there's even more of them. And you're like, yeah. this is fun. <laughs> yeah. It's not every three years or whatever you get more. Do you, it, how, do you uh, like really analyze your, uh, your, your stats on your rodents? I used to when I yeah. sold them. Mm. But now that I, I don't even make enough to cover my own snakes. I gotcha. It's, it's more like uh, triage. <laughs> as okay. many rodents as possible, as soon as possible, as fast as possible. <laughs> does that yeah. make any sense? No, it does. I, I've just been, because I'm so nerdy, I'm like, you know what? Like, I started counting how many I wean every I'm like, how much, how many am I making? I'm like, it's lots, but I don't know what lots mean. Like, it's a lot. I was like, the only way to find out is count. So right now I, I count and track everyone that I wean every day so I can get a picture of what I'm doing. I know what I use. I want to know how many I can sell. Cause, cause we got to figure out the weird equation of rodents. Cause you need, you need way more on hand than you actually need mm -hmm. to cover what you need, which is that's screwed up math. That's not usually how math works. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I'm be perfectly honest. Right. Like having done it for like two years, I mean, I, you, you might have heard that episode. It's largely, it's like, no, it's not worth it from like a time management to retail live rodents unless you're retailing a large amount at one time. Yes. And so you need like a good customer who comes by to buy 50 every Friday and they're timely and they'll be there and they know their order and it's relatively the same. Every yes. Week. These like onesies and twosies and random and they skip. They will fuck you so hard. <laughs> yeah. Just, Look, I have to freeze all of these that I saved just for you and turned other people away mm -hmm. for you. And you just 
bought it from somebody else or whatever. I I was telling somebody, maybe even on one of my shows, the gap in the the, the opportunity in the rodent market, in my opinion, is not does somebody need rodents and can I provide it for them? Like on any given week, I could find the rodents that I need, but mm -hmm. I might have to call five different breeders. Mm -hmm. If I could find a customer that would not do what you're just saying, I would turn away other customers and I would give them a better price just so that I knew they were going to be there every Friday or, or every other Friday, whatever they commit to. But then you get, yeah, the, the, there's the fickleness of, of customers, which then leads to being stuck where you were talking about, which makes the breeders go, you know what? I'd love to be able to be a consistent provider, but I don't trust that people are going to show up. So I'm going to take the money on the table every stinking time. And it leads to this screwed up yeah. industry of rodents. Right. And so like, if I were to start selling again, I would gas everything and sell them frozen at shows like ASF, like this is a premium product for your ball python, and so then it, the inventory could be stored at each size or whatever. That's yeah. what I would do at this point because holy mackerel! I even tried to court someone to be my like, you get every rat at a dollar a head if you just buy everything that's extra at the end of the week, the sales week. Smart, you know, like. If I know I have way too many smalls and I don't need to grow them up to mediums for the next week, just just let let me just give you all of them for a dollar, so I don't have to process and freeze and depoop their butts and sort you know what I mean and sort them and weigh them. Yeah, I could not find a person for a dollar a head <laughs> to, to come and just be consistent. Like if they had a couple hundred ball pythons, they could come and buy fifty to seventy every week. And feed yeah. whatever they got, or they got less, but they'd probably get like fifty to seventy. Couldn't find someone to do that either. This has saved me the time of sorting frozen. And I was like, hmm. yeah. To your point about the, I need one and two. Like I don't. I I I honestly I tell I, I I turn those down. I can't even get into that that bad. I've got one customer that gets six from me every week. Pretty cool. And he bought a snake. All right, fine. We'll do six right, a week. We love and, that. And yeah, I'm down. Totally cool. But yeah, the really the sweet spot is even one customer a month that'll take 700 wholesale. I'd sell 700 at 50 cents on the dollar to not worry about it and know that they would buy every month. And I right. naively, I think I have those arrangements, but I, I haven't actually done it yet. So like I've been told I have those do arrangements. Do they want them live or do they want them frozen? Live. Yeah, frozen. Okay. If I go through that work frozen, I'm keeping those are mine. I'm getting retail on all that work. Like you say, sorting, weighing, cleaning their butts. No. Put the problem is like frozen ASF, like hoppers or weans or whatever, they're largely like a mouse. So yeah, they, people they don't want to pay mush? ASF price for a, like a mouse equivalent frozen. Mm -hmm. So you'd almost have to price them like a mouse. That's what, what I have found. So I'm, I'm, I'm damn near that price anyway. I mean, I, to, I could, it's always that balance of keeping them and growing them up. So, I mean, I probably could charge four or five bucks for like a medium or a large, but I can get the two or three bucks just bang, bang, bang live. Yeah, like you know? frozen mice are like a small frozen mouse is 70 cents. Yeah. I don't want that. Right. <laughs> So these are all the, this is why I don't have another species. I still have all this to figure out, Jessica. I can't, I can't go like. Yeah, you, you'll you get it. But I, I will, but. You'll get it. I think that's why most rodent producers like come in strong and then stop doing it <laughs> right, in two years right. also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's Nuts, a lot. Of... Here's a boot. <laughs> Meet each other. Enjoy your day. Yeah. <laughs> And it's why it's like, well, frankly, like critically important that we do have the big houses that breed, you know, tens of thousands of rodents a year because they like keep everybody afloat in the whole country. Yeah. So like, thank God they exist. Right. Yeah. I just, it, it is, it is a hard business to manage, even though it is satisfying to see all those little babies. I do like a little pop-up thing, you know, I think uh, I, I, this is sort of a downer thing or comes across down there but i think adrian's point is uh 
pretty spot on. He says they didn't quit. That's the biggest reason anyone's on top of anything. There's a theory that I think has some value from kind of a, this modern day stoic dude on Instagram who sort of wants to be a guru. But anyway, he says, you know, success, what if success is really just time suffering and the ability to handle critical input and implement it? I like to think that I worked a little harder or became like really good at my job and my career, not because I just stuck around long enough and got kicked in the face long enough. It's kind of true. Some of there's some there's some truth to that. What do you think about this theory? Okay, it's another negative theory that the entire hobby market that depends on hobby purchases, not like pet sales, but the mm -hmm. part that is like anything above that breeding, okay. breeder to breeder sales. Sure. Most people don't really make money on those sales. Or, or like the, the total pool of money is so small in recession times, low income times, that you everything has to collapse to pet price. And so if you're doing that, you basically have to be in long term, like Adrian said, because you, you make all of your money on, on the bull markets. I, like, I think I would agree. I don't think I've been around long enough or thought about it enough to quite have a firm opinion but i think i agree yeah i, I think he, yeah i think i agree yeah i was i can't remember his name the the crusty echo breeder from altitude exotics oh What's i know who name? you're talking about i don't know his name but big time dude yeah yeah Out in Vegas, said, right? yeah he said it or colorado mm -hmm. colorado maybe it's the vegas show i'm thinking of that he's at Right. So he's in an interview. He thinks that the entire high end Crested Gecko market can only support four full time incomes in the whole country. It could produce, can support maybe 200 part time incomes of like breeders for yeah. like breeder to breeder high end sales and then breeder to hobbyist sales and then breeder to low end pet sales, but not true wholesale sales. Yeah. The ball python market is much bigger than the Crested Gecko market. And there are more people vying for market share. So there are more people doing breeder to breeder sales. But by definition, because there are not infinite fools, there's the whole market cap is different sizes at different times. And there yeah. may not be enough income in the entire market for breeder to breeder sales to be an infinite number of people's primary wage. The pyramid would have to get way broader at the base, right? Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying, and I agree. But if I, everyone sold the pet people, it could be quite large because then could. you aren't selling to – like, you know, the market cap doesn't matter because everyone always has $100 for a banana. <laughs> Not everyone, but you know what I mean. Like, there's yeah. a wider source of people. That's right. I think – and I think balancing that's important. Um Sometimes I, I wonder if I'm just telling myself that because I have Ryan uh, Butler. Richard knows his name. Thank you. Uh -huh, That's his name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes I wonder if I'm telling myself that because that would explain why I have banana enchies in my <laughs> display racks. But, but I think that it's true. And I think, I think a lot of those people will buy. I think they're more likely to be return customers maybe than the super high end say I, I never sold a four thousand dollar snake but say i did i don't know that i'll sell five or eight or ten four thousand dollar snakes to that same buyer in my lifetime maybe i will but i don't think i will but i could sell four or eight or ten two hundred to five hundred dollar snakes to somebody in a year and a half to a two-year time period but if you sold them 10 does, isn't that intent to breed Sometimes it's not. Sometimes they truly have 10 pets, but isn't that yep. intent to breed? Oh yeah. But I think there's a big gray area between that. I know a lot of overlap between pet owner and Hey, maybe I'll breed a clutch or two. This could be fun. Right. But like if, if most people who get into ball pythons get in with the intent to breed and the market cap at that moment has diminished a lot. Cause that's just how much money's in the system. 
they they there there may not be enough margin to go around. I think that's the point of Brian's. Uh, there's only oh. room for four full time. So everyone could be a part time breeder. Everyone could be a hobby breeder and could make sales. But the amount of total money in the system to support this shape uh, right. is diminished. So the percentage of people who could do full time incomes goes down. I think that's true. That's and, something I've been like wrestling with <laughs> since he said that. I was like, how many full time incomes does the ball python industry support? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I've wrestled with it, but I think I acknowledged it. I mean, I had I never I never set out to have sort of a brand revenue, so social media or sponsorship brand revenue, snake revenue, and now rodent revenue. But I found that I need to, like otherwise I don't I'm I don't need to make a huge amount of money, but I damn sure can't burn the money that I do have. So I have to make sure that that's the case. So, um, so in that light, yeah, I think I've, I've sort of acknowledged that to myself, not publicly, but yeah, to myself. Mm -hmm. I don't even think that's like bad per se. I but don't I either. Think yeah. People, people in the pandemic sold a very specific, set of instructions to breed ball pythons and have a little side business. But I think that the economics of it in some ways hold up and in some ways don't. I think this is part of it. Like the market cap is smaller now. So you maybe you have to breed rodents or sell accessories or something, period, because just the amount of money, period, is different. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Right. Yeah. So like when someone's like, I'm only doing high end ball pythons only, there is enough room for those people too, but there is not infinite room for everyone to just do high end ball pythons only. Would you yeah. agree with that? I do agree with it. We all think we're going to win though. So that's like the, the fuel. Right. And none of, we all think we're better than the next guy. So, or at least better than, the bottom, like we're at least in the top, you know, 90%. So that leaves 10%. Are that, we that, though? Well, that's what we, that's, that's life. That's what we all tell <laughs> ourselves. We're all that's, about that's that. the Dunning Kruger effect. You're like, I'm yeah. so good at driving. Yeah. <laughs> Are uh, you? Like, yeah. It's, re it's, it's reinforced every day that we live. Of course, I'm a great driver. I'm a lot like, you know, like it's uh, so. Uh, what was the the guy on NPR? He used to have the Prairie Home or whatever. He's like, yeah, all the kids are above average here. That's what right. it is. We're all amazing. That's what. So yeah, we we rely on. Fuck, um, that's a weird old man reference. Bebop, bebop, a rhubarb pie. <laughs> you remember that commercial? Yeah, I do remember. I it. fucking the, watch the, NPR the, too. And the flower, the the, the flower commercial. Yeah, that's <laughs> the weirdest set of memes for elderly people I've ever heard. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, but now, but now that I've moved to Minnesota, let me tell you, it is you're spot right. on. <laughs> you go to Thanksgiving dinner and suddenly you're talking about Edna's turkeys in, uh, you know, the 1977 <laughs> fuel crisis. You're like, what What the hell? I just brought up, uh, you know, uh, the Vikings game. <laughs> you're like, you're just, it's just, you're like, what happened here? Did you, did you get a rhubarb plant for your front yard? It grows good up there. Might uh, well. I might as well. It's bitter stuff. You got to have so much sugar for rhubarb though. And then it's all stringy. I'm not, I don't want rhubarb. You don't like it? No. It's not like home timey. Get a strawberry got, patch and a rhubarb patch and then you can make. I, I do have a, I do have a pumpkin patch. Um, right. Yeah, I, sure enough. It's like pumpkin seeds. Oh, the little, I, it's the little white pumpkins too. Like high grade, you know, um, artisanal. Like decorative <laughs> <laughs> have a patch full of these little uh, little forage. flavored asfs uh <laughs> call proper rodents <laughs> i'm not mixing in uh, I, i'm such a structured like systems guy when people are like well i feed a little of this and then i throw in these when i have time i'm like no wednesdays they get sunflower seeds saturdays they get mealworms and otherwise they get kalmbach that's it no nothing else you don't give them um free no. to to you food like leftover no. bread or i don't like variables no really yeah because if something goes wrong farmer uses all the calories available to them 
to grow their stock. Yeah, but that's introducing variables. What happens if they all start pooing and I gave them kale, bread, and white pumpkins last week? Now I've got I've got a problem. I have to go figure out what the problem is that I didn't have before. Do you think kale, bread, and white pumpkins will make them poo? What if you were like reassured that if it was like a natural food, human food safe product, it would just be fine. But is I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to do it consistently. Do you know is what? That- Oh, yeah. There's a theory. Oh, here's a oh, theory fuck. for you. You're, you're going to love this. <laughs> um, okay. So let's go way back in my uh, 1996, September 7th, 1996. I get hired by Ruby Tuesday as a dishwasher. Uh, at those days, uh, Ruby's had 900 stores. They were at the top of the, uh, the casual dining um, misery. In every Ruby Tuesday kitchen, above the two swinging doors before you walk out into the dining room, it says, without consistency, there is no quality. Still to this day, just branded on my forehead. Without consistency, there is no quality. Yeah, I don't want... Uh, and I don't want yeah, but I don't know if that has to do with feeding rodents a, a little Why? piece Why of bread. Okay, so what's it, what happens if I find it's amazing? Now I got to buy bread all the time for them. I have good results with what I right, got. Right, but maybe it was amazing. You don't like to try new things with uh, – maybe you just need to have them for six months, and you're going to be like, okay, now it's time to try. Is, was that a future? No. I, if there's a problem, it'll be a future. Like if I start – like if I find that my stock is weak and only produces for four months and they need sweet potatoes, then I'll add sweet potatoes every Tuesday or whatever. But I, I would do it in a consistent, measurable way. What about dubia? Would you give them dubia? Uh, no. They I'll love murdering. I will, <laughs> Disassembling I, dubia. I, I will never have a dubia in my house again. I got a dubia for, um, I got like 15 dubia for my bearded dragon once. Mm-hmm. I found dubia roaches in Florida for years after that one purchase of dubia roaches in the house. But you were in Florida. I know. I'm, I'm not okay. Up here it's drier. and I mean, <laughs> anywhere else it's like not as fun to live in. Mm. <laughs> I like Dubia. They're pretty nice as far as roaches go. They're not as fast and weird. Yeah, I just don't want them in my living space. I don't want them like living where I want. I have Adam's home and then I have other animals' homes. <laughs> uh, they don't have regular bread deliveries in the wild, uh, says Emma. <laughs> yeah, I- listen to Emma. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you have to do anything specific, but I don't think you have to not do something because you just want to, too. Yeah, you know, but man. I like, I, I do, I, I, I firmly believe this. I mean, I'll admit I'm, I've been being a little just stubborn for the sake of being stubborn, but I really do believe in consistent, predictable results. So if I have something good going, I'm, I'm not going to add something new to the machine. Generally That's stupid. why you don't want another species. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Doesn't have anything to do with market penetration, <laughs> being able to vent shows you couldn't normally vent. It just has to do with that. I'm going to sneakily work in the word penetration all weekend just for <laughs> kicks. You've inspired me, Jessica. That's my new that's my new thing that I'll do. Uh, so I'm a, a nerd. So w- one way I cope with like being... Uh, down about something is I look for knowledge. Yes. You ever find yourself just looking, just any kind of knowledge, <laughs> like other people's podcasts or books or books about, I, I do read a lot of like marketing sales books. I don't have anything to do with snakes. Cause I'm just like, fucking, you can sell a snake. You can sell insurance. It's all the same thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Do you do anything specific that you think would be good tips for people in terms of looking for knowledge? Yeah, I think, well, I think the idea of looking for knowledge is spot on. I, you, this actually probably be up your alley. You might like this whole, for a whole show idea. I'm not saying, I'm saying like this experience. So I was really frustrated uh, two days ago. I take a Mm -hmm. ball python to a vet. I want to be a Mm -hmm. responsible owner. Um, I believe in my heart, it's a stressed out male after breeding season. He's got these horrible, stinky cottage cheese looking poos. I want this fixed. I don't Mm. want him. Yeah. Get him out of the room, hot closet, other place. Let's go to the vet. The vet 
says, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Uh, and now let's talk some numbers to make sure we're all on the same page. Your total today is going to be $1,100. Mm -hmm. So I have many emotions in my mind. One being how the hell can anybody own a pet snake for 80 bucks? If it's going to be 11, if a vet is going to look them in the face straight on and say it's $1,100. So I said, well, um, you know, that's a little prohibitive. I have to say, I want to do the right thing for my animal, but what are we talking about here? And she's like, x-rays, blood tests, I forget what else, a few other things. And I said, well, it appears to be a gut problem. And I'd love to address the symptoms that we see on the surface. So we did. And it was 600 bucks later. And I go on. So I'm frustrated and I'm feeling down because I've worked hard for that 600 bucks. And now um, mm -hmm. we are back to some dollars and cents. But for the record, I probably could have replaced that snake for less than 600 bucks, which is not how I want to operate. But I do think if somebody walks into a vet office and hears that, that's exactly what most people are going to think to themselves. The snake is alive and well. We're I'm, I'm feeding it liquids and all of this sort of stuff. But in that moment, I said to myself, you know what? This really sucks for this price right now. But I want every test result back. I want to learn everything that I can from those test results. I want to learn mm -hmm. how to feed this snake a liquid diet. I want to learn the brand of these catheters. I want to learn everything I can so that the feeding tube, not the not the catheter. Did he need food though? I have no idea. This is I, something that came up recently where people are like vets are like very insistent on assist feeding carnivore care to ball pythons. Yeah. A lot. Did they do a fecal uh, ask Alicia? Yes, they, they started with the fecal analysis. That that was the one I told him. I said, yes, let's do that. Let's test it for the parasites and the culture. The parasite test came back today, negative, all clear of parasites, still waiting on the culture to come from it. Um, and we're going to put just what you said, carnivore care, liquid diet into it. And that's where we're at right now. Did you have it tested for crypto or salmonella? Or just they did a fecal float for eggs? No idea. They took the poop and she called me with a parasite report today. And she said they're still waiting on the culture test. That's where. So my ignorance on the topic. I'm not a vet also, by the way. Sorry. Correct. Right. I know. <laughs> I understand that. I thought it. Well, you would have surprised me. But I, that's what I'd assume. But you're more knowledgeable on the topic. So. Alicia is a vet, though. Maybe she can. Uh. Oh, Take well, a phone call. yeah. So, okay. So I went to, well, here was my thought. I know that, that RAL exists, although I will tell you, I looked at their order form yesterday because I remember seeing your advertisement. So it is working. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll just type in shit happens and we'll see what we get. But even that order form is very overwhelming. I had no idea what, I don't know what I would, what I would do. So my, but in the moment of your, to the topic of your question, it was, let me learn everything that I possibly can. That's a nice looking rat terrier. I do have one of those. If you want, this to is my about chihuahua it. actually. Oh, I have a, I have a, I have a rat terrier with no yeah. eyes. His eyes Close have been enough. Same yeah. difference. <laughs> yeah. No, she yeah. died. She's old. I just uh, her. whatever. I'm dumb. So, but yeah, Keep I took talking. a little bit of, I took a little bit of solace and okay, I'm gonna learn everything I can. What benefit can I gain from this? And then in the future, how can I? reach out to say somebody like Alicia or somebody else that's, that's knowledgeable on ball pythons and say, here's what's going on. And the last time I saw these symptoms, this is what the test came out as. But I knew that I, I knew that there were labs I could send it to myself and then converse with somebody maybe a little more specialized in, in mm -hmm. ball pythons. Um, I was also frustrated because the vet told me that I needed a large glass aquarium with full spectrum light. And I, I just asked where that insight came from. And she said, well, this, she literally said, like, I made mental note. There's no scientific evidence of that, but anecdotally we find it works better. Okay. Thanks. If I, if you're going to tell me with a straight face, $1,100. I, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. It, okay. That's I mean, it, I don't know. It, you do the best you can on the references that you get. The, the the vet that was referred to me wasn't available and no longer sees exotics. So, you know, on the one hand, I got this dying snake over here. On the other hand, you know, so you, you go and you do the best that you can. But it's the exact situation you're talking about. You're frustrated. You're down. It's expensive. 
all right, I'm going to try and find the knowledge and then seek out more knowledge and, and, and learn more from it. You know, why didn't you call me on the phone, Adam? Well, uh, I'm your bud. Yeah. I don't know the vet. I, I, I did call, I called other breeders. They said, okay. go see this, this off. yeah, yeah. They, I did call other breeders. They said, go, go to this office, but the, the vet that they recommended, uh, doesn't, I was told doesn't see exotic anymore. Okay. <laughs> well, what, I'm curious, like, what was the problem? Oh, fudge. Wrong one. Sorry. Yeah. What oh, was I the problem over here. here? Tell me. Tell me. Oh, let's, so let's I don't do even. Learn yeah, yeah. Anytime. Okay. So I don't like, okay. So I got a, I got a snake that's making stinky poos after breeding season, mm -hmm. losing weight, uh, and last eight on January 21st. And the poos smell like absolute death. He's continuing to poo, even though he hasn't eaten. I mm. don't know. I don't what know test for? what. Yeah. They're, look at those choices. It's like being at the salad dressing aisle. I just want ranch. Where, where do I, where, where do I, where's my all around? Let's get an idea of what's going on with this guy. Right. Test. Yes. That's why a vet would be important because they would look at the mm. symptoms and then right. be able to whatever, because it's what like, but you just accidentally got a bad bet, right? Hopefully I, their culture, their culture should come back with the bacterial part, hypothetically. Right. Like it could be a candida or that's a uh, fungus, but like, that's what it sounds like. But it could also be like salmonella or something. And salmonella will come back on the vet's mm. form. But, but then, so what, what occurred to me was, man, if there was a national vet that had insight or more specialty because like i could call up a doctor on telehealth now and get you know have a good conversation and get some get some prescriptions so if i could get the lab work and then i could call a televet i would pay them for their dr. time dr scott's all or alicia Do okay uh the dr scott's all takes uh on the phone uh exotics stuff where where who is that where is that steve's I don't know. Did he retire? I don't know. He he would list. He would just like. So he does a thing where he, you can send him a snake in FedEx, and he will take it into his care where he is to do whatever too. But oh he can wow! Also, That's interesting. Oh, and Gandalf, the Gray. Excuse me. Tom Harvin, the best. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I know them too. I didn't know he was a vet. I don't know him apparently. I know of them. Huh. Oh, that's now, this is this is not for is future. Yeah, she married Tom's yeah. son. Ah, this is I see like all, all coming these, together now, baby. Yeah, no, I like I see all these names and different brands, and then maybe I'll meet somebody at a show and I don't realize it's the same person, and, and that just happened here too. Okay, all right. Uh Aaron wants to know, so the poop looked like cottage cheese? Uh, yeah, gray, runny cottage cheese. Not like good formed cottage cheese with like a heavy curd. I'm talking like runny. Delicious. Runny Very gray. French cottage cheese. Oh, if you want adjectives, I'm going to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, okay. All right, good. Well, I feel like we're, we're learning, right? We're growing. We've used That's knowledge the thing. to. Yes. Right. It's always the right idea to go to the vet if you don't know what the hell's going on. It is sometimes really depressing to go to a vet and be like, damn, I don't know what service I'm paying for right now, mm -hmm. but I'm trying, right? That's right. So, and Yeah, I mean, and you always want to do the next right thing that you can. So I don't, I don't necessarily mind it. And I guess if I'm talking myself through this, I'm in a good enough situation. You know, I know a lot of people, like, you can't come up with 600 bucks on the fly. Like, I get it. So... Anyway, that's the, yeah, that, that was the thing yesterday. And I really said to myself, all right, Adam, get over this and glean every bit of knowledge you can, useful knowledge you can from this vet, from this experience, and then never, ever come back and go find somebody that can help you. Well, Alicia's volunteering him to talk will, to you anytime. That's very thank nice. You. Thank you. I will, uh, um, I, I will take it up. And uh, if, if somebody really, I actually, I will not share this, but I was going to say, 
uh, I did freeze a uh, poo sample. I have the frozen poo sample. I can I can share with everybody if they would like a picture of it. But I, I will not post it publicly, though. Oh, I sorry about your snake. You know he uh, he pooed today, and it's looking like a little more firmer cottage cheese. It's still that sort of pale off white, which is odd, but uh, it was quite a bit firmer today. I was impressed. Tom will be at Tinley. Uh, thanks for coming by, Alicia, so you can go talk to him if you want. This okay, weekend. cool. Thank you, Alicia. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go take care of dog balls or whatever you're doing today. Thank you. <laughs> where? Oh, he's also a bit. Where, where does where do they put the balls when they're like? Where do they <gasps> take? Like, what do they do with them? Isn't where there? Where do they put them? Is there a little jar? Little ball jar? Chinese food. <laughs> it wants on soup. It's free protein. Well, what else are you going to do with it? <laughs> My grandfather was a uh, veterinarian in Lewiston, Maine. And I vividly remember um, a scrotum being squeezed and with a razor cut open uh, as a youthful young boy. If you ever. Okay. So I had goats, right? Everybody knows this, but you get. Uh, you can catch rate goats different ways, but one of the ways is with a rubber band. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. I, I still I don't have goats, but I still have it. I threaten my husband with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Did, that was so weird. Because there's a little okay. sack falls off, and then, then, then you gotta like walk around the yard and look for it, and then the dog finds it and he's carrying around a little <laughs> it's like a tennis ball. He wants to play fetch right? with it. It's so fun after that. <laughs> Sorry, that was super weird. All right, Aaron says, it's definitely a worm of some sort. I've dealt with it before. Couldn't pinpoint what it was. Tested negative crypto and invidens, uh, Nido, and something else. And the vet gave Metro Nidas all, and that fixed it. So I did, let me, I want to compare notes because I won't say who, but I had somebody else tell me um, he used um mm -mm -mm. Flagell? I'm sorry? Flagell? Parental Pamoate? I don't know. I gotta I don't know. Um while well, you look at that, Peter yeah, said these are the types of stories that the big breeders in the old days were not up front with. Thanks for sharing. Adam, exclamation point. Thank you, Peter. You know, that's the other thing. Like everybody's terrified to say, hey, I got a sick snake, because you get just brand you get tattooed that uh, you know, your stuff isn't good. And that's not cool either. Oh, uh, you know what? Hey, that's exactly the same word that that this other breeder that I'm super um, has been just a super mentor to me. Metron it does. How do you pronounce that? That uh, Beast Morphs just uh, said. Metronidazole. Yeah, that's what he said as well. Let's see what this uh, this uh, this superstar vet here, this high dollar vet that I have says. Yeah, I mean, I, the hard part is like generalized symptoms are generalized. So like unusual poo, right? Extra mucus. So that people are like, I have extra mucus in my snake. Do I have nido? I'm like, fuck, you could have all kinds of stuff. Right, like, right. Only really diagnostics will start to get the answer. I, you can't. It's like you can't diagnose a person with headaches. Maybe like, oh, you got headaches. Who knows why you got headaches? You yeah, could, uh, yeah, you got a tumor or you're hungover. One of the yeah, two. We're not could sure be anything. Which. Right. You need some water or you're you're dead in four weeks. Yeah. Right. So it's good yeah. to to seek more information, but that this means next time you'll be, you know, better prepared. Right. right. And I I do believe whether it's good or bad shed tests or information in life good or bad the more the more knowledge and data that you have to work with the better decisions you're going to be able to make in the long run you, you gotta you gotta look for that you gotta try and find it sorry this is funny mega Warf says i worked at a kettle ranch that used to have a to cut band every year there was an old timer that would come by and pick up the bucket of balls <laughs> well they taste good to some people Let's put mm. it that way. Have you ever had Rocky Mountain oysters? I have. I've heard of such things, but I've never had. I've never had the delicacy of the uh, Rocky Mountain oyster. <laughs> Me neither. I done. I also did not eat the little ball jerky. I am good. 
for sure. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tried it. Um, yeah, I sorry. I'm just reading the comments, trying to catch up on on stuff there as well. Uh, yeah, there was a thing on like the was it like this planet or animal not animal planet that's the channel the one with uh, the the British guy that that's really good to fall asleep to uh, David, David Attenborough. Attenborough. Yeah, there's one episode of those where like the the natives and and like Scandinavia or the old time farmers are like castrating reindeer with just like crushing the testicles by hand. Like, yeah, we sell those here. Not I'm not by hand, but like a thing that will like crush the blood supply. Hmm. It, like, it made it seem like they were crushing the testicle, but maybe it was the blood supply. It was probably like if you crush, like there's only like so many veins and arteries feeding it. So we, they sell like a big clamp thing and you, I, this probably makes men feel really, you know, sen sensitive. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can just like jam it down and just crush it and it'll mostly die. But those ones, you not, not always do both testicle die. So you have to like come back and recrush. So to That's me, that's we got two, same. baby. Yeah. <laughs> As like <laughs> banding or, or cutting. Uh, it's, it's, a, I don't know why we're talking about this. I forget. I don't, I, I actually have no it. earthly idea where, where we came up with <laughs> banding <laughs> testicles or scrotums, I guess. All right. What do you think is a source of grit or determination when things are difficult? That is just internal motivation to use music or past events in your life. Where you're like, that was lame. So this is better than that. Or, or, or is there any sort of ma mantras you say to yourself when you're at a show by yourself, needing to go pee, <laughs> hoping somebody relieves you for five minutes and you haven't sold a single snake and you're like, what am I doing? What do you um, say to yourself? What's the the Adam mantra mantra at that point? I will say it gets it gets easier when I've started to do a lot of shows, and I know you and I have disagreed on that in the past. But I do a ton of shows now, so some of it is just like oh, I've been here before, and I rebounded just fine, no problem. Uh, you know, somebody will call me in two days, and this is just a fleeting moment. Don't worry about it. Um, I don't. I don't know. I really don't get bogged down at by the shows that much, but I do get bogged down like overall, like say a week, week and a half goes by and I don't sell a snake or don't, or inquiries have dropped off. Then it's a little bit like, um, the, <laughs> the bar was just so low from where I came from at the end that I, it's so easy to look back and go, well, this is still better than that. You know? Um, yeah, beast. Thank you. I, I have, uh, I, I have, I've experienced in the past bad results when I've smelled that poo before. And I, I, it immediately now when I smell it, the male's done, he's out of the room, he's gone. But yeah, I do have to keep an eye on those, uh, those females, see if they come around with it as well. Um, and the well, past needs a prescription. I'm pretty sure. I, if that, I'm I don't sure know what it is. What's that? The same thing. Yeah. Okay. I was just being dumb. Flagel's the gotcha. like brand name. Uh, oh, oh, I got you. Um, yeah, you know what, and and if if that's to tell you the truth, may I might even I might even circle back to everybody here, um, if whatever his results come back, then I might need to do like the the tree of like we like we were all doing and and COVID, who's been in contact here and what hours and what time, and then go go look at those females as well. Yeah. It's an antibiotic too. That's why the vet has to prescribe it. So you don't, uh, you know, cause a MRSA in your house <laughs> or whatever, you know, antibiotic no, yeah, resistance. I, I don't want that. Um, right. No. But how do the laws like state to state, like could a, could a vet from Maryland call in the prescription for me here kind of deal? If I found somebody. Yeah. Cause like the, like the, I don't know. What, what are they called? Like the, the online pet pharmacies. Any vet can call your prescription in to like petmeds.com yeah. or whatever. Right, right. Only if it was I well, yeah, I wouldn't just have my buddy in Maryland call in the prescription. <laughs> hey, Chris, can you call a prescription in for me? <laughs> oh, Chris works for an animal. I didn't know that. Right. We well, can crowdsource you a whole treatment for this uh, 
Paul yeah, Python let, poop crisis. Let's see what the lab results come back as, and let's figure this out, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, everybody, come by the booth at Tinley tomorrow. It'll be great. <laughs> How much Tenley prep have you done? And do you feel like you're on time to be ready to go? Or or where's your brain at right now? With all yeah, that? Uh, I, I got to get an oil change after the show today. So I still have to go do that. Um, and then I have to pack animals. But everything else is packed. Dry goods. My my checklist is complete. Um, I'll, I'll have everything staged by the front door in the morning. And I'll warm up the truck, load it up, and out I go. What dry so goods are you vending? Ah, uh, t-shirts and patches, but oh, just like, like merch. Yeah, just merch. But then, yeah, I don't have, I don't really have any other trinkets or like brand foods or anything. But like, like my towers already in there. My table, my banners display, my hand cart, tablecloths. Mm -hmm. My whole, like I said, that whole checklist is complete. Are you excited? <laughs> Yeah, I am actually. It's so I, I want, expensive. It's hard. It's like uh, and it's brutal. You know? I know. Yeah, um, I am actually, and that hit me today. Like I wasn't that much, even even as recently as yesterday. I was just kind of like, it's it's a day at work, Adam. This is you know, some days are fun work, and some days are just work work. And uh, but no, I got a little excited. I was I was like, ooh, it's tomorrow, man. I get to hit the road. I'm gonna set up. It's gonna be cool. Um, I am going to splurge on dinner. Very un Adam. I know it doesn't, doesn't fit into my model properly. I'm going to splurge on dinner tomorrow night and then, uh, go have a good show. All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, so like, <sighs> I know I don't like shows and I know, you know that, but like to me, wasting, let me air with that, wasting money on doing a major national show is better money spent then three little baby shows for brand promotion, networking, whatever. Even if you almost like made money or broke even at those little baby shows or whatever. Cause it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I would say, I would say to that, I've been pleasantly surprised in the Minneapolis, I'll say region, but specifically Metro if there's a lot of people in a metro area having your brand recognized, I've been I've been very pleased with with that. How many effort. million people in an hour drive counts? Uh, I believe I believe somebody can Google this, but I believe the Minneapolis, the Twin Cities metro area is between two and three million. Like it, I was amazed how big it is. No, I mean like if you, let's say you've been to show in I don't know middle of nowhere Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. that, that little city is, I don't know, 200,000 people, 500,000. Yeah. But you got brand recognition in that city. That's good. Right. But like, what, where, what are the, the best arbitrage of the situation? Because that's where I'm at. I'm like, sh if shows can be part of a business mix, but like courting cities of people, and I looked this up today because I was being obnoxious. Like <laughs> the percentage of credit cards in default, credit cards account in default by state. Guess where Oklahoma is? Pretty high up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> where are we at? Where are you at? <laughs> I should bring up the map because they released that for like the last quarter. And I'm like, fuck, the South is fucked. I think Alabama is like number one. Oklahoma's like three in terms of highest percentage of all credit cards in default. Mm. so like I, I just have to bite my tongue go ahead yeah yeah there, there's all sorts of uh geopolitical stuff that comes to mind there i just gotta let the it go trickle yeah. down shit that's what it is there it <laughs> is right there. coming right down i'm just saying like if i was you know just gonna double down and be like i'm just gonna keep courting my local population as hard as possible every time i would be mm -hmm. courting people who can't afford to buy anything you know what i'm saying that's yeah. what i'm saying so I, maybe I do. fair the, enough the, but the context of the location could have a big a it big has a hundred percent of the thing right yeah. to me because your snakes are good no matter where they're sold at because they're clean and happy and nice and they right. listen yeah. thawed or whatever yeah it's all about where you sell them 
Yes. So mm-hmm. I would say like, well, first if it's not working, it's not working. So your point, uh, you know, 200,000 people city, middle of Wisconsin, um, that's pretty close to Wausau, Wisconsin. That's a difficult show for me. I'm on the fence about whether to go back to that mm-hmm. show or not. Um, I did have a zero dollar show there, and in my mind was you, your voice, <gasps> your soothing voice. I have penetrated Adam say, <laughs> saying all these people with high interest loans on their Camaros. <laughs> And I looked around the room and I was like, it smells like high interest Camaro loans in here is what I said to myself. <laughs> and I can't remember if it was Mustangs or Camaros, but you get, you, well, you get the idea. Cause you're the yeah, one. Yeah. You live on enough one. bases. You, uh, get to, you get to figure out who's got a 29% loan <laughs> on their Mustang. So that's what it felt like. But the last time I went, uh, it was, uh, it was very, I would say very, it was worthwhile dollar for dollar. It made sense. Dollar for minute. It made sense. Hmm. So I'm one in one. So I got to go do, you know, you need. How many you, times do you want to do it before you make a decision? I, there's well, a lot of like sunk if, cost fallacy stuff going on here. You're like, oh, I got to keep going to keep deciding. And then you're like. Uh, yeah. But what, what was the alternative? If it didn't, if it, mm-hmm. if it's, if it's net positive, like every day at the office, I didn't you know, dollar for dollar gain all that as much. So, I mean, if I'm gaining, I'm okay with it. Um, Listen, there's two wolves in every ball python breeder's heart. One of them wants to do shows and one of them doesn't. One of them's gay. Okay. We don't know which one's gay. (laughs) Was that the bad one or the good one? Or it just is. is. (laughs) Okay. I got you. They're probably both gay. Let's be honest. They're They're gay and one of them wants to go to the hotel show. One of them does it. And everyone falls on different sort of parts, these two wolves. Because you're like, oh, I should get my name out there. I should sell. I need to sell the cheap stuff. It's like I saw a morph market. And then how everyone divides that, that spectrum is actually like incredibly interesting to me from like a business perspective formation perspective because everyone's so different some people are like yeah. i will never sell online i'm like what it's like what? a blessing people send me money while i'm on the toilet right yeah, a it's snake just, man, at any man. time any day yeah. any time i will send them a snake and it, uh, it's very convenient and it's free basically like uh, more market is cheap compared to how convenient it is right yeah but I, all right so i'm sometimes these arguments get presented in like a vacuum. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's, let's back out of the vacuum for a minute. I sell at shows and a lot. I sell on Morph Market, fair amount. I sell a ton locally on because Facebook. Because of shows? No, 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 no. As a business model, every Monday. And it's funny because somebody was like, why do you tell everybody this? They're all going to start doing it. I'm like, no, they won't. This isn't rocket science. People just choose not to do it. It doesn't work Mm -hmm. for them or they don't want to or whatever. And I'm sure people have told me stuff like get a new species. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it yet. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But every Monday I post an ad and I boost it for $15. And I think literally reliably in the past. On Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. um, I think in the past four months since I've been doing that here in Minneapolis, I literally think I've sold a snake a week from those ads minimum. Um, it's good. And, you Do know, you think it's, it's really because good. you had, were, the, were those animals on your morph market or husbandry pro already? And so they could browse them or did you have to like engage them in a conversation, ask them what they wanted, send them a picture? A little bit of both. So I generally, the model is I keep a, uh, picture of my current inventory list with a little proper ro- proper Royals logo on it when they say, and I'll post like five pictures so they could see all five in one shot. They don't have to click on the link to look through 10 mm-hmm. pictures. Boom. It's their grandma test kind of stuff. Hey, what's that one? What's this? And I say, well, shoot me a, sh- a screenshot and here's a list of my current available with prices. So you have an idea of what, what you're getting into. And then usually they'll ask me for about two or three snakes uh, information and I'll send them pictures and usually, you know, that's how the sale ends up happening. Do you want a website? Maybe I want. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It is sort of the uh, old, uh, 
where's the urgency? What's the triage? If it's working, mm -hmm. it's working kind of thing. Um, but all that overlaps because sometimes people say, oh, yeah, I saw you at the local show. Now I see you here. All right, cool. That, so that's what I'm saying. It's not all in a vacuum. And so mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do if I'm going to vend in Des Moines, I'll I'll add Des Moines market into the Facebook targeting ad and I'll get some pre-sales from that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it all overlaps and is interrelated, which goes back to your question of how do you deal with, you know, downer times of zero dollar shows? Well, all right. I've got I've proven a proof of concept to myself. It'll the sun will come up tomorrow. It'll be OK. And, and something will come through somewhere. But it's sort of casting a, a wider net. So shows uh, Instagram, Facebook, and then uh, and Instagram, I market on differently. I don't I don't boost stuff, but I just post pictures there constantly. And then Morph Market as well. Yeah, I don't mean like to dis dissuade the personal touch thing. I mean, some people like to browse anonymously. So if all mm -hmm. of your inventory was somewhere and they're like, they saw your ad, the ad sent them to your website. They still had to talk to you to like arrange pickup and payment and to just talk to you about animal care or whatever. But they could browse. Like if you had a landing page of all your in inventory, you right. that first touch wouldn't have to be you necessarily they could just yeah. browse does that make sense no it does i yeah and it's it's some again it's working doesn't mean it won't evolve doesn't mean that i don't think that there's nine more good ideas that i just haven't gotten to yet yeah but i mean this is no moment. pressure <laughs> do you, you want to do as many shows next year as you are this year no that to your point no. Brother. So this is a, this is an informational gathering year. Mm -hmm. um, most of these shows I'll do two to four times this year. And at the end of that year, I will go, all right, this is stupid to keep doing this show. And this show is gold four out of four times. Uh, you asked when I would sort of make that decision. I've already signed up and paid for those shows. So I can't like make myself back out and decide that they suck. Cause sometimes we'll do that to ourselves. We'll be like, that this sucks. I'm not, I've already decided it. So, you know, I want to be able to gather mm -hmm. some evidence. So yeah, I'll get through this year and, um, by, you know, November, December, I'll make my calendar for next year and decide which ones I'm going to do again. Yeah. Like, so I've done eight shows or something, nine, over, I don't know, a lot. Mm -hmm. Two different promoters, but in the same city. Mm. I feel like I know that fucking city. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's one way to to learn it. Yes, it's yes. it's sometimes that most of the time they're fine ish, mm -hmm. but I it, I'm tired of fine. I want to exceed expectations. You know, let's let's all be above average. Let's fucking try. Let's not improve that it. shit, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> so that's why I'm like. I would rather spend the money to lose money at NRBC Dallas than do another, than spend the time and money to kind of like break even at a small show. But I'm like, I don't think I'm getting any traction here. If it's either or, sure. Could it be both? For me, it is because I don't want to do 10 shows a year, even. I got you. I want to yeah. do like maybe six a year. Mm. See, I enjoy them too. I, I do like it. I don't see humans very often anymore. And I used to see humans constantly. So it's a nice little, you know, something in the middle too. I don't even mind being at the show that much. It's like, it's the burden of coming back to what I have to now take care of. They had three days or something off of not being taken care of. Right. It's absolutely like debilitating. It's like two weeks afterwards. I feel like I'm playing catch up. I, uh, that's how I'm going to feel this weekend. I do like, uh, most of these mid, I only do, um, one, I think only Tinley twice a year. That's my only two day show. All the rest are one day shows and only one other show. Do I get a hotel for? So I'm back home the same day. That's, that's good. That's and, cool. Right? Yeah. It, it makes it very easier helpful. to catch up. Yeah, you're because you're right. Yeah, when I was in Jacksonville doing the Tampa two day show, by the time yeah you're exhausted and like non snake home dude, like I get home, my wife's like, yeah, here's your son. He was a blast this weekend, and she disappears <laughs> for three days. So now I got snakes to catch up on, and uh, you know the eleven year old that is yeah hell on wheels. So he's not. He's a good kid, but you know. 
Yeah, it's it's not the show itself is also not in a vacuum. Like how much money right. you made or lost or how many snakes you sold. Correct. It's also like everything else around mm-hmm. it. And then maybe if you were being like really well compensated, you're like, oh, I'll put up with all kinds of right yeah, wife making me sleep on the couch <laughs> <laughs> for, for yeah. three for three thousand dollars or whatever. That would be pretty good. Right. I and mean, she would probably like that too, because she could buy something. They'd be like, go buy stuff, treat yourself, yep. honey. That would be right. so nice. But then you're like, oh, came back again. And your husband's like, mm, fuck. You left yeah, me are... alone again and you didn't make it. <laughs> those are rough evenings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, so I'm, instead of like dwelling on it, which I will dwell on everything because that's my personality type, right? But I'm just doing different things. That's part of what's it. Every show I've ever been, I've done something different every time, a little bit to test new features. That's fun, right? Yeah, just to, like experiment with little oh, things. Just anything. <laughs> just to see like, uh, you know, whatever baseline is, like if we change one thing, like I did yes. I did mystery boxes at the pre-Christmas show. It wasn't that good. It wasn't successful, but I tried it. So like, I look forward to that. So that is like motivating. You're like, oh, maybe this one will be uh, different because I'm trying something new and we'll see what happens. What do you, what's your, like, other than mystery, what's your other, what are some other things you've tested? Like, what are, like, I play like little games throughout the day to keep myself entertained and try new sales. So I've done toys, Mm -hmm. merch, or like, like supplies for the animal, both assembled into a kit and separate. Beside Mm -hmm. the animal, like by the ball python, by the kit, by the, let's say by the kit. I've done the snakes in different positions relative to each other or to the lights or to the displays. I've taken what, them out and put what them. Do you find, yeah. What do you find works on that? <laughs> that that's the, that's the endless game I play with myself. First level, second level or third level. Should it be off center? Should it be over here? What if I have two tables? Should it be there? I have an odd number of displays. So only three. Should I set them on the seam of the two mm-hmm. tables or should, should I do two and one? I just, I'll even move absolutely. snakes around. Like if a banana is not on the top, I'll make it on the top or a pie. So they yeah. can, they'll see that first, but then they'll be like, ew, a hundred dollars too poor for that. Obviously Oklahoma. So then their eyes will f- track down to the normal <laughs> for 20. It's, it's cutting they, into the Camaro payment right there. This is what I'm dealing with here. man. So like I will, I will, and I will fart around with all of that. The whole show. I'll, I'll even like, even though I don't want them touching it, I will hold snakes behind the table to be interesting looking. Mm-hmm. If it's like a slow one. And I don't like to do it because it does block the aisle if it's busy, but I will obnoxiously stand in the aisle too <laughs> and just pretend to be cleaning, but then like way over engage when they walk up. Sometimes <laughs> that doesn't work. They're scared of that. <laughs> I, I am actually ha- cleaning though, but you know what I mean? Like I want to have a little drone in the room and watch, watch like your move. I'm like the your- worst. Like your flirting moves with the, your customer flirt moves. I don't know. Because you have to do like hard open or, or soft open. Yeah. You know, like, like sometimes I'm just like, literally, what are you looking to get into today? Or, or are you looking or are you browsing around? So, so that's like kind of hard. And sometimes that works. But it's usually if you just like, I don't know, there's you comment on their sh- shirt band or whatever the fuck you can think up when you're looking at them. Those usually don't turn either. That's why I'm I, always like, I think they just want to buy a snake. They don't have anything to do with what you say or do to them or call to them. I think generally, but then we can attach meaning to totally meaningless things. I've sold three snakes to people wearing at different shows and across the country wearing Great Smoky Mountain National Park t-shirts. I am like a home run hitter. Let me see a Smoky Mountain National Park <laughs> shirt. You got them in the I, oh yeah i'm like man that's that's my that's where i'm from i love that country that that western carolina and then we start reminiscing about you know some waterfall and they're, they're buying a snake yeah i do think here's something i think that hurts sales is talking to someone for too long because i've like even if you like talking to them you're having fun. You're jet. You're j- jibber jabbering, talking. Even a customer or a person, they just like want to know about snakes. Yeah. You talk to them too much. People are more likely to just like peer over 
your table, realize you're like super engaged and literally just run away from your table. Yeah, they don't want to interrupt. And and I do realize that a lot. Like if it's a busy show, like even if they're best friends, I'm like, dude, I you, I'll catch up with you later. You gotta go, kind of thing. Yeah, you yeah. get there's only a finite space of like socially accessible air, and people right. don't want to interrupt that. Yeah. Especially yeah. when there's 900 other ball pythons in the room. Fuck, just go right, to the they're going to go right? find another $20 snake somewhere That's else. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So like when it's a customer, I feel bad, right? Because usually they're like a, a returning customer who bought something last show and they just want to like talk about their snake for five minutes, but, right. yeah. which is fine. I love you. But like that absolutely like will destroy any sale potential during that conversation because people don't aren't necessarily like queued up waiting to look at your same snakes as everybody else. Right. You know what I mean? They're not yeah, going to yeah. wait. Unless you're Justin or Bob. Yeah. You're, it's just a, yeah. Yep. Seize the moment or it's gone, man. Yeah. So like, I, I, I don't know. I do. I, I, what I'm saying is I stay motivated, but like, I think for me, it's time to change my stars. My stars are changing. <laughs> do you get, I'm, do you get like fan people like like you have a pretty good presence on out and about like on your on social media and stuff do you get any of that or do you well, help that do you find that it helps your brand not really no i, find, I, mean, I a couple I find of people have been lot. like i i've watched your show sometimes and i'm like yeah thank you and they're like have a good show <laughs> thanks <laughs> I mean, I use it to like reinforce that, that the service and accessibility aspect will be there. People are like, well, you know, if they're talking and I'm like, well, you could contact me anytime. Here's my card. My cell number's on my card. There's my social media. There's the QR code. Like there's 19 ways to get a hold of me and I'm not going to disappear. That helps sometimes. I mean, these are all, mm -hmm. you know, sub 5% success turn rates, but better than zero i mean any yeah i guess if better. you don't you don't never step up to the plate right you miss what is the fucking fake wayne gretzky quote you miss yeah, all the yeah. shots you don't take yeah thanks wayne <laughs> it's not real but yeah so like to me the the podcast does more sales to just people who like become my podcast friends or on, whatever, right. on instagram that's yeah. what where that has come through in clutch it, it doesn't feel like they maybe they don't have internet in oklahoma i don't know it doesn't there aren't that many people it's not in their camaro <laughs> they don't have the dash not i the mean mean oklahoma's fine chris lives in oklahoma she's the best but like it's just tough she's been in these shows and i'm like girl she lives nearby though so if she makes five seven hundred a thousand that's like pretty good because so she, she can just go home each night right yeah but not me Ugh. oh yeah if you look if you can go home with 700 bucks that's pretty good i mean for an afternoon one day show go on you know yeah these are all two day shows though mm, it's a little tougher. in tulsa i think there's one there's cold-blooded in tulsa that are one days that's i don't know right. have you done that one so it's three and, and a half hours away i would have to either get up really early or get a hotel at least the night before which sort of nullifies the like the, quick the one day convenient. beauty of it yeah i really thought you were gonna say you had to do a lot of chemicals or something <laughs> that's really I mean, what that's i thought true. you were about to say yeah. that too <laughs> absolutely i thought that was about to pop out uh yeah i look i don't know it, the different things work for different people and like i I do. I Rick brought up that he just enjoys it. I enjoy it. I do enjoy it too. So it works for yeah. me. Yeah. I'm not telling you not to, I'm saying yeah. not giving myself permission to not do shows is uh, inspiring. Of course. Like of course. Well, and I think something I do like about, I guess, podcasts in general, but this format is we can actually parse out the context of what's good and what's bad for each other versus one line screaming on an Instagram post, you know, you're an idiot shows are for dummies. Okay. Good talk. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, when we can pull it apart, it's a whole lot better. Right. Cause I, I, I honestly 
there's that obviously place in the market for everybody. But if you're an online only kind of person, breeder, you have to structure your business differently than if you do even any shows, period. Like you will have to wholesale a percentage of something because like where the $20 normal is going to go. Yeah. Not on morph market. Not right. on morph market. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could do it on Facebook with like local meetups. Yes. But can you move enough of them? Maybe not. So like it, it absolutely like changes how you partition your crop of babies each year. Yeah. Yeah. And just as to what's, like those questions are what I think separates not even success or not, just, just even keeping going or not. Cause it's a lot of relationships either find, you know, even just finding wholesale options or mm -hmm. the skill of selling, you know, I've gotten pretty good. At, I, I, I move normals for, you know, 40 bucks. It's pretty good. That's all right. But I, I do have a lot of them though, too. So that's a lot of work for 40 bucks on the other hand. So it, it's sort of all, all washes out, but I do track my, like my average sale through over the course of a whole year. I try and improve that. I try and think of what makes sense to keep doing. All right, I'll do less shows, but I need to increase volume and increase dollars per sale if I'm going to do that, or maybe not dollars per sale, but I can't go backwards. So then I need to increase volume if I'm going to do less shows. So those sorts of thoughts go through my mind a lot. So I try and collect as much data and track as much data as I can. What year do you think you're going to need a wholesaler because you will not be able to sell normals? I don't know. It's a long way away. I'm not, I'm not to that point yet. Okay. You think? Yeah. Uh, well, how many clutches do you have this year? Let's say um, you produce like 70 truly hundred and under byproduct animals that are, obviously still have meat on the bone, but then that's 70 slots every show. They're basically like a wash in terms of profitability. Yeah. Well, to put things in context, I have, well, with my tower, I would have 48 total slots per show. So three ARS displays a 14 each and then a six tier tower. So, and I'll do, uh, I paired 30 females. So, you know, 23 clutches hopefully I get this year, maybe, maybe 25 if I'm doing really well. So that's 150 animals minus holdbacks plus what I currently have in stock right now. So I'm a little, you get five away. eggs a clutch, six, six times 30 six is times 180. 20. Yeah. Six times 25. I was thinking I probably have some females that won't go. I have first time breeders, that sort of thing. Okay. So what percentage of that do you think are 100 and under club? Hopefully very few. I, you know, I don't know. Oh, 100 and under? Yeah, I don't know. You're going to have some male double hats, that kind of thing. I don't mm -hmm. know. Hopefully not more than one or two per clutch. So you think you only have 70? Like, this is the crap I think about. <laughs> yeah. But it's like... it. Cause like I was mispositioned coming into 2022, frankly, let's just be honest. Like I was breeding stuff. That's like for me, clutches, long-term stuff. And then I misassigned my ability to sell normal double head males because I was able to sell them the year prior mm. for 20, 40 bucks, whatever. I used to sell normals for 80 bucks. Okay. Those in the, the pandemic, right? <laughs> yeah, a little, a little no, a little. I'm like, it's head, good you have head it. clown, so that makes it a little more expensive. Oh, fuck, they're not, they're paperweights now. Basically, that's how much they 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 cost now. So like, having misassigned my ability to sell them, I now must bend them, and until I sell them all, right? Yeah. But looking forward, if you don't do a little predictive analysis on either your ability to sell it or ability to sell it quickly, you sort of quickly go underwater on a large percentage of your, the babies you produce. Yeah. So that's what I, I think about every day, every day. I, I don't know. I've, I don't, 
I'm not saying I could sell everything that I have, anything that I have. I'm not saying that, but selling the snakes hasn't been that much of a problem. Now, granted, I spend a lot of time on marketing. I don't have an office job that I go into and that stuff. So, you know, when people ask, I'm like, well, if you had six hours a day to work on selling, could you sell? And they're like, oh, probably. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so there is that, but I, I, I think I put a lot of effort into pairing to minimize those sorts of situations too. So like, I rarely, if ever, will do a head to head pairing just because of what you're talking about. So I at least right, but want male hundred percent heads are like Aaron said, sub a hundred dollars. Sure. But that's not right. like my life. That's not like <laughs> defining like, <laughs> I know, but like, Look, how, I hate, I, how I hate we... paper cuts too, but those, they happen. I don't know. No, I'm not. I just mean like that is, are you retailing that in this coming year? I maybe it's my question. Or have you decided not to retail them yet? How much meat no. on the bone is left when Adam sells it? On an individual snake? On a hundred and under snake that that most breeders at this point are like that's wholesale material yeah if you could sell it wholesale sure i'll get rid of it but even finding mm -hmm. a wholesale buyer is is i mean you and you and janet used to make some pretty significant jokes about finding wholesale buyers i gotta say so like yeah you know, i mean this is, like, be, <laughs> this is the problem <laughs> like facing the whole industry right right like but, we're all coming into a season where the wholesalers are buying a little bit again like like Ian is supposedly buying again at Outback and some other ones. But you would have to know very early that you can't retail it because you can't be more than 170 grams. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I don't I don't know. I've just put the effort into selling them. I don't know. I think I don't know. I think I think a lot of people say there's either morph market or there's either shows or there's only facebook i think you can i do okay reaching all of them but I, it takes a lot of time and effort and it's it's primary primary work now to do that but then again it all overlaps to another if now that i have the rodents okay you bought a snake you're gonna need regular food all right talk to me oh you need 20 asfs hey what are you feeding your asfs or what do you feed to your, your ASFs to? Oh, ball pythons? Here's an inventory sheet. You know, it all kind of, the machine all kind of works together. Okay. <laughs> I guess Adam's not, not dealing with these problems. What, what do I, I don't know what to say. I don't know. that I, I have a bunch. I'm going to take them to the next show and try and sell them. They might move. They might not. I don't know. But is there a point where you're like, I did not sell them so long that they I cannot house them? anymore not, or are you gonna not, buy another 5540 for mail <laughs> inventory you know you know what i'm saying like there's got to be a point where you're like oh fuck yeah no i would i look i'm not above giving them away sometimes like if somebody but you know if, if if somebody buys a, a even a pet yeah. grade snake and i'm like hey do you if you have the space you know if you're interested in one of these you can pick one of these out as well kind of thing you know yeah bogos are fun yeah which I don't normally do. I hate sales. I don't like sales at all. I don't, I don't run sales. I don't like doing those, but I, I will, I will give them away as a, you know, kind of a nice surprise sometimes. You hate, why do you think you hate sales? I don't believe in your own words. In my own words, I've, I've, I believe if I'm doing it right, my aim, I'm not saying I'm perfect. My aim is to price things at a fair price that, that brings value. If I'm doing that, I shouldn't need to run sales. Sales what come is and go. A fair price. I don't know. Whatever I come up with, but I mean, like I put the thought into it. I don't. I so like in the restaurants. I want the experience, the service, and snakes, the follow up. But like, so like Black Friday, I mm -hmm. just sit it out. And to be honest, over the empirically over the past couple of years, it I don't see a dip in November, even from sitting out the black Friday mm -hmm. stuff. Like you talked about at the beginning, if it's the right snake that somebody needs and they have the faith in me to buy it from me. And I'm clearly not gouging the price. Then everybody's happy. But isn't you said clearly not gouging the price. 
But what if yeah. the price that you're assigning is by definition a sale or something? Like it's not, it's it's some, because like th this is the problem with life right now. <laughs> it's like, what is retail price? Yeah, Nails. right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Do you feel like you, you come in low on purpose because you don't want to run a sale and you want to be like a, a good buy, not cheap, but like, you know, please buy it someone. Or do you feel like, What's your pricing paradigm right now? I guess is what I'm asking. Generally speaking, the best that I have to look at is the prices on Morph Market, which you brought up before. Those are the prices of things that haven't sold. By definition, they're still on there. Fair. Cool. So it's then not. I look at then I look at the brand recognition sort of power, whatever that algorithm is in my head of who's selling what priced at what. If I don't know the brand and any recognition, I'll probably price it at or even a little bit higher than that person because I think that mm -hmm. I maybe bring a little more to the table service-wise or security-wise or Adam's not going to disappear. He's gutted it out for this long. He'll probably be here tomorrow if I need him kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's what a good Steve's Morse, great friend, I'm probably going to have to price it a little lower than Steve Steve's Morse offering if it's the very same offering. And mm -hmm. I go at it from there and give it a shot. Um, but then I think there's also the a large part of the clientele that doesn't have a clue what Morph Market is, doesn't have a clue that the industry's bad. Um, that's another reason I like shows. You get out of this vacuum of doomsday sky is falling and you know there's happy people that are excited about the market out there. Great get to hang out with them for a day at a show <laughs> outside of Oklahoma. <laughs> evidently. Oklahoma's, I mean, their vibe is fine. It's just they're, they're poor is my, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. They do not have disposable income. Yeah. I've had them come up to me and like, uh, like every deal is, is it must be dickered. $80, yeah. $20. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have military discount on this forty dollars snake? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Right. This is like the bargain ba basement section. Uh, I'm just not used to that. Uh, maybe they are. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> so, do you do price drops at any time during the year, or do you do you, or do you reevaluate prices mm -hmm. if you're like, man, it's been to ten shows and been on Morph Market for three months, and it's been on my list. Yes. Yes. I do listen to the market. I don't just like ignore it. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't know exactly what the rubric is, is on that. Some of it has to do with how much space I need or how, how, you know, impending incoming hatchlings are that I'm more excited about, you know, mm -hmm. some of that will, uh, will happen as well. So Right now, it's a little less pressing. I, I have a few clutches coming, but really the high volume of clutches aren't going to start coming till July and sort of third and fourth quarter. So, and I'm ahead on my budgeted sales and projections for myself. So I'm probably going to be a little a little tighter on price right now. So if you were to drop a price, you would just drop the price, not run a sale is your preference. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's fine. That's the same difference, right? There's there's no. something FOMO-y about a sale. It's like fuck you, a limited time only. Come right here now. So that part entices a kind of customer. It does. Part of that is is my own like. Ex I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, we're we're having a conversation. Go. Okay, sorry. The other thing is like my own experience. I and I see it, and we probably know who we're talking about or can imagine who we're talking about. I hate these things. They they list it on Morph Market at like literally double what the price should be mm -hmm. and then run 50% off sales. Like there's some magnanimous, you know, do-gooder when it's all BS smoke and mirrors. And I guess, I guess I would rather them inflate the price rather than deflate it. So good job there. But that annoys me. That drives me nuts. And I've been with some of those folks. So that drives me crazy. Can I tell you something? What? Between you and me. Just us right here. Just you heart to heart, ear to ear. Yeah. So like there's a business model that is targeting naive buyers that don't know the market. Right. 
you put a lot of nice snakes on a nice website, beautifully photographed. A lot of them are bananas and whatever, right? And we all know who we're also know who we're talking about. But those buyers will only buy one or two, probably in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so they they will use Google and uh, ball pythons for sale. And they will find a nice website and it looks safe and they can pay on the site and get it to their door. And so a sale probably really works for that customer. Like they've saved it. They don't know the price, but they're like, oh, it was 500. They have no idea what market market is. Mm. It's 250. So right. the sale part isn't really for you. It's for their customer, which is a different kind of person. Yeah. What about that theory? I would say, and this is probably, I don't know, you probably won't like it. Look, if it work <laughs> if it works, it works. Go do it. I you know, I can't I can't be the judge no, and jury. Not, of I don't everything. do this, clearly. No, not, I know, no, no, no. I'm not saying that, but like the end of it, I can't really and I can't even at the what I was just describing, I can't really even get mad at it. Just annoys me. And I at the it end does of the day look I, funny at a show, right? Yeah, it drives it, me crazy. Mm -hmm. But it works and it works for them. And, you know, welcome to the real world, Adam. Put your big boy pants on. It's going to be competition out there. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff where I'm like, God, we all got to put our big boy pants on. Cause like, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff like, cause people get, get mad at any sort of like criticism of the marketplace or other people, even if it's like constructive criticism. Cause like, they're like, any sort of negative hype reduces enthusiasm and then people don't want to invest and if people aren't investing the ponzi scheme isn't getting bigger and i'm like okay fuck i hear you but like part of the problem is that it's so like that to begin with if we were all being chill and mostly focusing on selling to pet people too there would be less like intensification of this part and i think People don't like to hear that at all. I've gotten some mess cool messages. The up, oh, everybody. <laughs> Cause when I sell corn snakes, 80% of them go to pet buyers. Did you know that? I would believe that. Yeah. I think they're, they're just I like a happy pet. And so like, I don't have to worry about the price of corn snakes. It's the same every year, basically. <laughs> I think most of mine probably go to either pet owners or beginning breeders um or you know people that could envision themselves perhaps one day breeding kind of thing i don't even think most of my sales go to other breeders yet so that'll be mm -hmm. that'll be interesting to see because this year is really kind of the first year that i'm really we'll have the that caliber of animal you know double producing double visuals um that's hopefully that's not in the pet category but depends on what they are i know i know right <laughs> so um but I, I do have to say too, like as much as I say this stuff annoys me and as much as I agree with, with a lot of your points, the beauty of this market or this space to me is the absolute wild West capitalism of it. I, it, mm -hmm. it it's, it is, it is some of the, and not that it should be because it's wild animals or live animals, not wild. These are not wild. There's nothing wild about these animals, live animals, but it is some of the most, least regulated most laissez-faire of markets and it's a blast i mean that's part of the fun it is it is you know there's parts of it that i hate and there's parts of it that are scummy and gross and then there's a real beauty to being left the hell alone to figure out how you're going to make a buck and how you're going to look yourself in the mirror after you make that buck and decide that you did it the right way yeah, it's kind of like being a bartender, to be honest. <laughs> it is. And I love Cash it. chips only, please. <laughs> I loved that shit, man. I loved it. It was like, it was better than gambling. I loved bartending. It, it is it is great, man. Just some days you make it and some days you don't. But man, just the possibility that you could was great. I loved it. Yeah, there is a lot of Keith, like, I don't know, interpersonal stuff with pricing that just fucking stresses me out because everyone you know that there is like this like thing that happens where people don't let the market decide the price they want to decide it manually <laughs> you know what i mean and i'm yeah. like 
that's not how that fucking works. Y'all are not capitalists, actually. They're I don't even know what they are. There's something they're like, they're like, we should all collude together. If everyone wakes up in the morning and we yeah. all put everything up for the same price. And I'm like, that's not how humans work. And that's not how markets work. Right. People will always want to be the cheap one. Want to be the value one. Want to be the premium brand. There will always be those kinds of people. And if you're breeding something that's a collectible, basically that makes more of itself, the price will always go down. And it'll bob around wherever demand is. And then, but then people are like, no, we should fix it. And I'm like, fix what? You're going to control all of these people? You're not oh. going to control all these people ever. Yeah. And what's and, up? And, and that's part, hey, what's up, Jeremy? That's part of, um, that's part of the allure to me. Um, again, because I think I'm above average and I think I can compete in this space. And that's the drug. That's the, that's the little drip coming through the vein going, um, does that give you, does that like make you motivated or is that like something you're st striving for? You know what I mean? Like the, there's like a difference. Is there a difference well, there? Like, they will you know, like both. I, it's I, like a push pull. Yeah, I believe it, but then I got to live up to it. You know, like I, I still got to look around the room and be like, yep, this is mine. This is, this is my room today. Like that's not going to be the case at Tinley tomorrow. That that's my advocation for the small market shows like big fish, small pond. Bring it. Really yeah. big pond, small fish. Uh, it's going to be tough. Right. You feel feelings that are weird. <laughs> yeah, I like I do. medium fish, medium pond. That's, that's a good that's, spot to be in. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm into these days. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> no, I don't fucking know. I, I'm still trying to figure out my market in general because it's so different than the one I came from. So like none of my advice is good. None of it. I don't know. But I've just been like. You know, I still have 2022s, to be honest. I do too. Yeah. But and I, it's I still, still have them. They're, I feed them. But I I've still 20, have them. 2022 Candinos for two years. What Not the quite actual F? What do you, are they males? No, they're females. But listen, last yeah. show. What was the last show I did? Uh, the hell was I? Somewhere around here. Oh, Hastings, Minnesota. A little suburb outside of Minneapolis. Sold two of them. Out of the blue. Haven't sold a Candino in I don't know how long. Two of them, boom, back to back. Different people, different buyers, didn't know each other, nothing. Were they yeah. big? Yeah, they're good size Fish? girls. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. Were they wanting to grand? breed them? I don't think so. No, I would say, okay, actually, I would say, you. I don't, they didn't, they, I had to describe the difference between pastel oh and cinnamon. Jeremy almost yeah. got killed by what? A motor vehicle? No, by Steve. I'll give you the answer. Cause he, Steve Casino. What He's did right. they do? They, the four of them were in a van together for sixteen hours straight. <laughs> That's what they did. Do with each okay. Other. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a lot of, you know, farts, road snacks. A lot, oh, big farts and uh, yeah. I've heard that Jeremy's the dude that always rides shotgun and never sleeps. So he, Jeremy's just psychotically, you know, nineteen <laughs> hours awake, yapping on about, you know. Who knows what? Hey, people are listening. I just got a private message about, uh, can you help me run a Facebook ad? Yeah. So listening. I know. Good. I know a lot of people using Facebook and or Instagram ads uh, very successfully. And some of them are driving it to websites. Some of them are driving it to Husbandry Pro. Some of them are driving it just straight to Warfare. And they're like, fuck it. If, I, if they hit this landing pad first, maybe they'll buy something here. But they could wander off and buy something else. And they're all doing good. Do you like occlude the ad so it looks like you're selling a snake, but not really? Or do you just go for it? No, no. Do you no, say I, ball pythons for say, sale or do you say like premium ball pythons I say, in uh, the city or whatever? Yeah, pretty much that. I usually try and attach it to like a recent thing. So like a show's coming up, but you don't want to miss out on these. Contact me. Uh to learn details ahead of time, or if the show just passed, Hey, you missed out at the show. No need to worry. You know, proper Royals is here 24 seven. You don't have to wait for a show to do business. Message me now. Do you um, avoid keywords? I avoid for sale. I avoid, uh, available. I avoid, um, inventory. So yeah, it's, it's like, it's mostly like, look at these pretty ball pythons, uh, message for more information. 
Yeah. So I know some people get away with it if they pretend there's a physical address to their business. Like they link their business account to some kind of physical address. Mm. Like they have a storefront because a pet store can technically do whatever it wants. Oh, I see. Yeah. Some people do that. And I and I was talking to Kenny Bomb City Balls. Mm -hmm. And he said he was doing it on Instagram when he was doing it, running an auction, he would boost a post. And I'm like, aren't you scared you're going to get nerfed? He's like, yeah, but I don't give a fuck. I'll just start a new Instagram. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was using like auction and stuff and boosting those words. So like, I don't know the right answer. People are doing it. Do you target a specific age demographic or just people who searched reptiles or what are your, your personal preference? Is this Ooh. proprietary information? This is uh, this is a real litmus test right here. Um, now I well, you'll love this. I actually, I, I learned all of this from a post that uh, Darian made, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this madman's advice, and I did it, and it worked. So it's not proprietary. Like I say, most people just won't do it. But uh, I do 18 to 55 uh, women only. Um, they seem to interact better with. Uh, <laughs> Uh, women only on Facebook. Yeah. Women only. Um, and then I do <laughs> keywords, uh, reptiles, snakes, lizards, and tattoos. Tattoos. That's it. Yep. Do you think, okay. I, I'm sure you've seen your YouTube analytics. I'm like yes. an 80, 20 men, male dominated viewership. Oh, big time. Yeah. Same. Yeah. It maybe you even think more, it's just yeah. because women control the purse strings or why do you think women work for you and not men? I'm sorry, 80, 80 women or, 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 or 20. Women? I'm eight men, like 20 women or less. Yeah. 80, yeah. 80 men, 20 women on YouTube. Absolutely. And, and I think Instagram is like 60, 40, 65, 35 favor of men. I don't know. It was anecdotal. Darian said, just choose women only. They're more likely to interact with you on Facebook. And so I did it. And you run a mail ad just to see what would happen. No. Okay. <laughs> don't you think you should change the age gap to like, I don't know, older? No. Cause that that's anecdotal as well, but not from Darian. That's just from who I see stopping in my booth and interacting with me. I, I like asking myself. Them are younger. Well, I'm like, do I, do I see 65 year olds? No, I don't think so. Do I see 60 year olds? No, I don't think so. Do I see 55? Oh, a few. Okay. Let's cap it there. Yeah. Like my YouTube demographics are very strongly 35, 45. It seems like, and there's there it's, it's not like a, a tight 35, 45. It's, it's definitely a bell curve, but I don't know if it's because we're older or because it, you need like an established adult to start a ball python breeding business in some ways. Right. Yeah. I wonder if like marketing to like the middle, like couple of 10 year brackets would be better. I don't know. I'm just asking sure. questions. Well, I'm just trying. <laughs> and well, and, and Northwest Terraria uh, nailed it. I, I think there's a big soccer mom component. You got some extra money. You got kids that want something cool. Let's get them a bright orange snake. And, uh, you know, um, $25 for that info. Yeah. Rest. Yeah. You know, moms rest will get period. it for the kids. Okay. Well, here's a question. Well, if you're, is you, is your permanent business plan to still be targeting moms getting pets for kids or do you want to be, targeting more breeder sales one day both i to your point earlier i think i'll always have a need for uh skills moving byproduct great fantastic i'll sell to the soccer moms mm -hmm. hopefully i'm selling some you know clown axanthics to not soccer moms mm -hmm. that'll be a fail if they're the ones buying those because that means that i'm not they're not the vision that i think <sighs> All right. Yeah, I don't know. We're doing great though, I think. I think you're doing well. Great. Yeah, I think it's just getting by. Like I think it's it's 
that's not my long-term plan, but it's probably always going to have to be a component of it. So it's a good skill and a good answer to have. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I would prefer me personally, me to wholesale a lot of animals. So I don't have to sell. Like I want to, I want to retail corn snakes in that price point, not ball pythons. If that makes any sense to anybody, like it doesn't make any sense to most people because they're like, why, why the fuck is that? Why would you breed a snake that is as cheap as a wholesale ball python? And I'm like, it's just a different clientele. Yeah. Well, I was going to, I, I mean, I could accept that it works for you and I can accept it doesn't apply to me. So I, I don't, yeah. yeah, it doesn't apply to most people. Don't do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, like, it's, <laughs> it, like if I'm spending a lot of time managing pet corn snake sales, I don't necessarily have time to manage ball python pet sales also. Very good. Yeah. And I got if it. I'm going to get rid of corn snakes, it would free up time to do pet ball python sales. But since I don't want to, because I like corn snakes, like I have to like make a trade off choice. So that's part of, uh, I don't know, the problems having multiple species, right? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I would say that applies in my rodent model. Why I'd rather have one massive customer that is very low price point because I need to do the rodents either way. So if I can make a little bit on them, but not deal with the ones and twos, yeah, oh, yeah. they will yeah, nickel thanks. and dime your time and soul. And away. I ain't got time. Yeah. Plus, they're not coming to my house. So I got to go meet them somewhere. You know, um, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. All right, tell me. Uh, we've been doing going for two hours. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, on your day before Tinley, you're saying, probably we trying to get we're, ready. We're, we're ticking down here too before too too long for me. Yeah, anyway. no, we're done. Tell me okay. what you're taking to Tinley and what your table number is and where they can find you. Thanks, please. Uh, and I got to say thanks to Rick earlier. He did more marketing on a snake for me than I have done at <laughs> all for Tinley, which is fantastic. So I got a couple of uh, female uh, banana VPI Azantix that I don't know that there's many of anywhere in the Midwest. So those are pretty cool. Those will be there. Uh, booth number 15 at Tinley. Uh, go in the main entrance, turn left until you hit a wall and then go to the far corner until you hit that wall. And I'll be right there all the way in the very back. Um, let's see, what am I taking? Let me, um, let me see here. Some, I'll give you a, 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 some, some cool stuff. I got a, a couple of those lovely uh, smoking hot right now. They're on a heater. Uh, the Candino's got a couple of those going to be there for you. Um, I got, uh, I got some super bananas. I got, uh, some super banana calicos. Um, I got some combo heck clown stuff. I've got cinnamon pides, um, down to just females on those pretty cool. Some visual lavenders that are not het for pied. I found out this week, thanks to Charlie. Um, so they're a little bit, um, more appetizingly priced and then, all kinds of cool grandma stuff, you know, the, the banana combos, um, super banana combos. I like those. And I do have actually all joking aside that is, a, I think at a good price and might be appetizing. I do have uh, a male adult breeder. Uh, that's my blackhead het genetic stripe. He is, um, he's fulfilled my needs, but he's, a, he's 1600 grams eats like crazy and breeds fantastic. Um, He's, he's done for the year and he's done for me. So if anybody's interested in him, I'll have him there as well. Awesome. So there we go. You did Thank a great you job. Thanks. Yeah. I have fun today. I have fun hanging out with you. I always appreciate when you invite me on. I, I look forward to it. It's we good. should have more talky talks. Okay. Yeah. I just, I don't know the right answer to anything, but I feel like I like talking about it. Cause I don't, I need to parse it out. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I can't we talk can... to my husband. He's like, Oh, snakes. They're just, why can't you sell them? What are you talking about? I'm like, no, there's more to it than that. <laughs> there's, gotta, there's gotta be more, right? We need meaning in our life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the answer is just, I don't know. It worked or I don't know. It didn't work. I, I'll do something. I'll do something else next time, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like people have been doing, doing this exact thing for, I don't know, hundreds of years, right? Why did this beer sell right. at the pub? but this yeah. one did not you're like, fuck, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and then it doesn't really matter because it's random, but like I've been watching real quick. 
a lot of like pop up craft fair videos on YouTube because they have all talk, the same talk about niche down. Yeah, oh fuck, that's so it, it's like a whole thing. Like they're like, okay, I'm gonna make soap that my <laughs> that smells like my grandma's lavender, and they're like, fuck, this bitch is she is having so much fun making soap, and so she she's like up going to the pop up, and they talk about how the pop up was good for soap, and I'm like, this is the same thing. It's just a different market. Yeah, that's <laughs> right? it is. And she's trying to like merchandise her soap different than the next show. And she's putting them <laughs> on this thing. And then she's like, okay, and I'm going to rebrand Lavender with fucking uh, bags so they can. I, I'm like, it's the same thing. It's just yeah. a different product. And like, what is working for these pop up vendor, like art craft fair vendors? And they're doing, and it's all the same crap we talk about, but it's just a different context. And I'm like, whew. Yeah, it's it's um, all it it really okay. is all the same thing. And I like so like I work with a guy on Instagram. He's a realtor, and he even he said to me, he's like, if you could sell snakes on the internet, you can help me sell houses. It's way more normal. You could do it, Adam. I'm like, all right, I'll help you. I'll do. I don't know. I don't know if it'll work, but if you insist on paying me to help you, I'll help you. You know. So right, because it's it's about finding a customer who wants whatever it is. Right. That's literally everything we're doing all the everything. time. Everything. Yep. <laughs> Camaro matter. dealers still find these people that should oh, not have Camaros and get them to buy them. How do, dude, how that, do they do it? That enlisted for he just got in, he just got a stripper wife <laughs> married, got them bennies. Now he's ready to commit to a Camaro. Look, bring your girl cinnamon down to the auto shop here and let's talk Camaros, okay? <laughs> no offense to any cinnamons out there. No, yeah. Cinnamons are Sorry. in, they're hot. Uh, yeah. Always, they're always popular. Right. <laughs> no, I don't want to sell so soaps at expos. I just want to know what people who are thinking about their business are thinking when they display their merchandise and decide how to sell it. That's what I want to know every day. Is there any moisturizing component to goat testicles? You need to make some soap. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna add. You're gonna say, uh, "Oh no, uh, hemi peen casings or something." <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa!" No, goat goat testicle soap, Rocky Mountain soap. Right, I don't, I don't want to sell soap. We just got to figure out right. uh, optimization. I guess is what I'm talking about. All right, thank you. All righty, thanks, Jessica. Wave to everybody. Bye, everybody. Let's wave. We're